Hi, it's Jerry with I Love RV Life. Today we're going to talk about something very important, your trailer tire maintenance. This is going to be very, very important if you're new to the RV lifestyle. Hi, it's Jerry. Today we're going to talk about something very important, and that is trailer tire maintenance. Something that is really, really overlooked. A lot of people who are new to the RV lifestyle really don't understand how important it is to be able to properly maintain your trailer tires and equally what their limitations are. Uh, I, for one, was one of those. Um, and one of the things that was most important, I didn't realize mm, that there were a substantial difference in the amount of brands that were out there. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you know we rarely, rarely talk negative about a specific product. I'm going to make an exception this time. When we bought our RV back in 2014, it came with a tire called Tomax. Tomax. And, um, if you do a web search, I'm going to let the web search speak for it. I'm not going to say a lot of bad things about it, but um, you'll see that they consistently appear as something called Blomax. We had a horrible, horrible experience with them. Now, I will share this. I am absolutely religious about tire maintenance. It's very, very important. And if you've ever had a blowout on your RV, of which we had two, 500 miles apart, one with 3,000 miles on the tire. Here's an example of, we were in Cordial, Georgia, right outside on 75, going to Disney World, taking our two of our grandkids down there for a week at Disney. We were so excited about going down there. And in Cordial, Kablooey, we had one of the tires blow out, and it was absolutely catastrophic. Did a substantial amount of damage to the side of the camper. Stayed on the side of the road for a long time, waited for the people to come and replace our tire. I made it to Disney World two and a half hours late. Oh, it was an awful trip. But once we got there, everything was great. And, we, you know, we had a great time at Disney. We come back up through middle Georgia, dropped the ki grandkids off, uh, stopped right outside of Atlanta for the evening, made it almost to Nashville. Kablooey, we had another one blow out on the other side. Two tires, a little over 500 miles apart. Again, proper pressure, proper driving speeds, all those types of things. It was just absolutely catastrophic. Again, this was on the other side of the fifth wheel. More damage. It was just like, oh my goodness, you know, what are we going to do here? We'd only had the camper for about four or five months at this stage. We were just absolutely devastated. 3,000 miles, 3,500 miles, and then boom, boom. It was just absolutely catastrophic. I called um, a, a tire dealer, Bud's Tire, in McMinnville, Tennessee, and told him that uh, I wanted a set of tires that I could drag through the sands of Iraq. <laughs> and Bud said, I've got those wheels. Anyway, we, we took the camper in. He looked at the other two tires. We had complete belt separation in those wheels. It, those other two were just literally moments from blowing. So we bought the tires and off we went. Now I'll share, since then, we've made a, another substantial change in our wheels. I'll put a link up here so that you can see what we did a couple years ago, but we changed out our 16 inch wheels and went with a 17 and a half inch Goodyear fleet tire. Why? Well, we were right almost at the max edge of what the original trailer tires were designed for. They were roughly about 3,000 pounds of capacity and this has at full load a 14,000 pound rating. So if you do the math, we were pretty much at the maximum end of the tire. The second thing is most of your trailer wheels are rated at 65 miles an hour on the highway and that's what we drive. That means there was absolutely no margin in being able to go any higher speed than 65 miles an hour and with the Goodyear tires, again, watch the video, and you'll get a greater explanation on that. These were 75 mile an hour rated fleet wheels with an over 4,000 pound rating. Now that was 20, early 2015. It's now getting ready, it's December of 2018. We're getting ready to go into 2019. And I've been running these good years for a little over three years now. Absolutely no problem. And a number of reasons for having no problem. One, we have a good quality tire. Second, 
we are running them at the pressures that are recommended, and we take very, very good care of them. And if you do that, you'll have good experience as well. So let's take a few minutes, and I'd like to show you what we do for tire maintenance. One of the things that you should do before you take a trip, it doesn't matter whether you're leaving from home, or if you do like I, sometimes we travel week to week or every two weeks, campground to campground to campground. Before I hit the road, I always inspect my tires. Let me show you what I do for that inspection. First thing that I'm going to do is look at the physical wear of the tire. I'm going to look at the top of the tire. I'm going to look around the sides of each tire. I'm going to look and make sure that there's no crowning. In other words, there's not a, a raise in the top of the tire. That will show you belt separation. That's very, very important. I'll look at all the physical tires. And uh, sometimes when we'll pull over at a rest stop, I'll do it again because I want to make sure that we haven't picked up a nail or some, some artifact inside the tire, but I want to make sure physically that I don't see any damage or any unusual wear that's in the tire. The second thing I'm going to do is look at the bead. As your tire starts to get some age, you will start seeing fine cracks. Now these tires are in still very, very good shape. They're only a couple years old but I'm going to look around the edge of the bead of all of my tires and make sure that I have no fine crack cracks. You'll start seeing horizontal and vertical cracks in your tires. If you start seeing those cracks in your tires, especially around the edge of this bead, it's time to replace them. Do not go out on a trip. You have a a risk of tire separation, especially after these tires heat up from being on the highway. So we make sure that we make a good inspection of the tire, that there's, you know, that the rubber's looking very, very good, there's no fine cracks. And again, I'm going to look at tread wear and make sure that the tread is very, very good. You can see I have very deep tread still in these tires, so I've got a lot of life made in these, left in these tires and they're looking in very, very good shape, very good shape. The next thing that I'm going to do is uh, check uh, air pressure. And uh, here you'll see, I'm look, you look on the side of your camper and if this comes from the factory in the wheels that actually came with a camper. Now, I have upgraded these wheels. Uh, these are now Goodyear uh, 75R 17 and a halves. I've gone from 16 to 17 inch wheels. Interesting thing about this wheel is it's the exact same diameter as the 16 inch wheel. It's also a little bit thinner, which is really great when I jackknife. The other thing that these tires had when I ordered these, uh, instead of having the rubber stems, uh, these actually have the metal stems. And I will share this with you. If you have a camper and you don't have metal stems, I highly recommend having metal stems installed. I rarely lose any tire pressure. But I'm going to use, I call these the trucker's friend. Um, this thing goes up uh, quite high. These tires, because they are substantially different and they are fleet tires, they require 110 pounds for the weight of this camper. Um, that does a couple things for me. It does make a tad of a bumpier ride, but because they are a thinner profile, and uh, we have to jackknife to pull into our home, and these tires slide better at that rate. So I'm gonna check my pressure, and I'm gonna look here, and I see I'm at 105. So before we leave, I'm gonna go ahead and put uh, five pounds of air in all these tires before, before we travel. One of the challenges about putting air in your tires is a place to find some place that you can actually pump them up. And I don't know about you, but with 40 feet and then the truck in front of it, 56 feet, and then, you know, the height of the camper, especially if we're in a rural location, it's hard to find a place that you can just pull into a filling station and then pump your tire, or you have to find you an interstate and go to a truck stop. And that sometimes that's not convenient as well. The second thing that we have a challenge, not as much as if you're running standard camper tires, is... Um, how to be able to find a location to where I can put 110 pounds of pressure in my tires. A lot of times you go to a filling station, you're lucky if you can even get 85 pounds of pressure into your wheels, uh, much less 110. So here's what we did. This wasn't very expensive. This is a um, just a contractor grade, what they call a pancake uh, air compressor. It's uh, I think we bought this at Lowe's. This is a Porter cable. and um, it's a, a pretty standard unit. The big issue about this is it will pump up to 
uh, 150 pounds. Uh, I've never taken it up to that mount. It's got gauges on both sides. I see that it will go that way. Uh, the next thing that I do it did was buy me a, a, a nice rubber hose, one that was uh, a three-eighths of an inch. You want to be able to get the pressure out of it, something that you can use to reach inside your wheels. Um, I've got this long uh, adapter here along the end, long filler, so I can use my uh, dually wheels and be able to fill those up if I need to. Don't get the plastic, the cheap plastic hoses because they get cold and they're not very, very flexible. But I've got this on a, on a quick connect where I can put it inside. It's still got a little air pressure from the last time I used it. And, um, you know, this I can take these little bungees off of it and I can reach back and forth. I can literally just plug it here into the side and, and use this and this will get up to 150 pounds. And that way before I leave the campground, I can always be assured I've got the uh, right amount of pressure in my wheels and I don't have to go out and try to find a location and go to filling station after filling station after filling station until I can find a place that can accommodate it. Well, again, it wasn't very expensive, a little over $100. I've had this thing now for four-ish years now. And, um, you know, it, only, it doesn't get used for anything but just to be able to pump the tires up and add a little pressure to them when I need it. So it doesn't get much use. I don't know if you can see this, but you can actually see that it has a 150-pound rating. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to treat my tires with this 303 aerospace protectant. I've talked about this several times. I did a video. I'll put that up here in a link up above of where we clean our awning. And uh, when we finish cleaning our awning, we always put the 303 aerospace protectant. This is a, a sun blocking, UV blocking protectant. And it really helps increase the life of the tire. It's not a tire shine. Um, just spray it on liberally. You don't have to put a lot on it. It goes on, it looks kind of milky. And you just want to get the tire nice and wet and a little bit goes a long way. I've had this 303 protectant for over a year now and still will probably have another part of a year left in it. So a little bit goes a long way. I'll put a link. I buy this off of Amazon. It's not very expensive, but make sure you uh, get the tire entirely. Give it, and make sure you get around that bead too, because again, you wanna, you wanna protect this wheel and you don't want the sun baking it out when we go to Florida or if we're out on the highway and that hot sun is baking these wheels. Um, you want to make sure you extend these lives and these things are not inexpensive. They're very, very expensive. Uh, you might get some of the 303 on the, on the aluminum. It's not going to hurt it. It's going to do fine. It will brighten it up a little bit, but it'll, as it dries, it dulls again. But um, again, I strongly recommend this 303 protectant um, on your wheels. It'll, uh, it really will help a lot in uh, adding life to them. The next thing that I recommend that you put on your wheels, especially if they're going to be stored for any period of time uh, without you driving, or let's see, um, we went to Florida for two months and on the, especially on the side that's facing the sun, we knew these tires were just gonna get a tremendous amount of UV exposure. And even with the 303, we wanted to make sure that we did everything that we could to increase the life of the wheels. Um, we put tire covers on ours. You're gonna see these. We've had these for a couple years now, um, which kind of attests to the, the quality of these tire covers. This is a good quality tire cover. You'll notice it has a kind of a fuzzy backing on the inside and the outside is that uh, weather, weatherproof vinyl. And uh, these things just slip on the wheel. Um, it's not a whole, whole lot of science to these things. And uh, just make sure you look at the size of your wheel. And uh, I'll put a link where you can get these things. And then <clears throat> it has a strap that goes around the back and then Velcro's here on the side. And uh, you can see these have had a lot of use. So anytime that uh, we know that we're gonna be sitting somewhere where the bright sun is gonna be hitting these wheels for a long period of time, um, even with the slides out, they'll still get some sun exposure. Uh, we make sure we put these covers on. And again, these tires are, um, we got them in 15, so it's almost 19 now. And uh, you can see they look like they're just brand new. So using this 303 protectant, 
and putting these covers on them does a really great job. So trailer tire maintenance, it's, it's really not a, a science as much as it is just common sense. Look on the side of your camper and see what the rating of the wheels are as far as air pressure and that's what you should have in the side for that manufacturer and that size tire. Or if you did like I did and that is replace those wheels with um, 17 and a half inch up from the 16 and some of you out there that's watching this might have 15 inch wheels. I'm not suggesting that you need to upgrade. Just make sure you're using a good quality tire. Do some research go out on the forums and see what everybody else is using for that size of tire and just see if people are or just do a, just a basic search on the web and see if you're seeing anybody else that's having trouble with those tires for the brand that you're considering buying. If you do, you might want to look elsewhere. Good tire pressure and, and look, I can't stress this enough. If your tires are rated for 65 miles an hour, don't drive over 65 miles. If they're rated for 75 miles an hour, then drive the speed limit for what those tires are. I can't share this enough that I've seen people, especially fifth wheels and a big diesel going down the road, you know they've got 65 mile an hour wheels on their tires and they pass me doing 85 miles an hour just flying down the highway and I'll look over at Joan and go, I bet you we see them on the side of the road with a blown tire and usually within 100 miles, there they are on the side of the road, shredded tire, the side of the campers tore all the pieces and they were driving a at 85 miles an hour on a 65 mile an hour rated tire and it built up pressure, the belt separated and the tires exploded. Don't do it. You know, be careful with your investment, be careful with your family and the vehicle and be careful with those that are around you. So it's easy. Just maintain good tires and you'll love RV life just like I love RV life. <laughs>